Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man, and welcome back to another part and another spotlight on Batania. Going from build 97 forwards. We'll get straight into it guys, because there is a lot I want to cover in today's episode. Um, firstly and foremostly, in build 97, added was a Starfield creator. Now if you are interested guys, all of the parts are available and can be found in the description below if you are looking for a particular item or whatever. Um, you can find it within the spotlight somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's definitely going to be covered by me. I'm pretty sure about that one. But anyway, moving on. The Starfield creator then. Elementium ingots with a pixie dust and an obsidian will get you the Starfield creator. Now this thing does exactly as it says. By releasing elven energies into the air if it is placed in the world during night time, it will create a starry night. Uh, that, ex that extends for a fair distance. So let's go ahead and get one of them. Starfield creators. Let's make it night time so that you can see. That is normal night time, guys. Let's go ahead and put this down. Wow. Look at that. They kind of like flicker into existence and shine and then go out of existence and shine. Oh, wow. There you go. It looks a bit strange, like it stops over there. But if you look directly up, that looks pretty awesome. That looks pretty nice. Starfield Creator, guys. Okay, guys, in build 97, also added was the Vitreous Pickaxe. <laughs> Look at this little tiny potato. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's make him wiggle a little bit. Oy, tiny potato. Anyway, ever put down glass and think, oh, I don't want that there, but then had to break it, and then you've lost it. Well, not anymore. Vitreous Pickaxe. No, in, not in, when I'm not in creative mode. For the win. Sorry, Tiny Potato, I just like, walked all over you. You can pick glass up, guys, with the Vitreous Pickaxe, which is awesome. Now, it also looks like it follows the normal rules of if you've got mana in your inventory, it won't actually run out of, um, uh, of durability. And you can craft it with two Living Wood Twigs, a Mana Steel Ingot, and two Glass. It doesn't actually say in here whether or not it does do that with the mana, but I didn't get any kind of durability on that at all, and I've got a mana tablet, so I would suggest that that is the case. Um, Vitreous pickaxe, guys. Even the potato looks happy about that one. There's been a version change now, guys. Release 1.2, build 101. Sparks were added. Now these can be quite complicated actually. Well, they can be quite complicated or they can be quite easy to understand. It depends how much you know about them, really. It's quite obvious. Uh, the sparks are really like conduits for mana. That's all I can really explain them as. Uh, so yeah, that's it on Spark. No, I'm only joking guys. I'm going to give you a quick example of what they do. Um, now, sparks, in their normal form, this one right here, is above a mana pool. Now, this spark right here above the mana pool, uh, if I was to put a spark, a spark on another thing that accepts mana, it will look around and it will find sparks that have a source of mana, and it will be like wireless transmission of the uh, uh, of mana, basically. So I'm going to do that with this thing that I've set up right here. So as you can see, we've got a nice little thing saying it's connected to this particular thing right here. So now it's going to be taking the mana directly from this pool. Instead of using a mana spreader, or an elven spreader, or a Gaia spreader, which we haven't actually covered yet, uh, pointed straight at that, it's going to use a spark, which is going to be awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself a diamond sword. Why not? I'm going to slap that in there. I'm going to put the book on there, and I'm going to go, boosh! And there we go. It's going to get, look at all that, it's just going, oh, it's going mental. It's like, yes, we don't have this. There's plenty of mana in there to be able to do the enchantment. And there you go. Nice and easily done. That's a loot in three. I'll get my book back. And I will get my diamond sword with the looting free. That's the basics. That is literally the basics of what a spark can do. You can place it above anything that requires mana. And as long as it's got a mana source, it will go ahead and... Um, uh, and connect to that. Now, interestingly enough, I can't actually see the connection of this. Oh, there we go. I can just click on the spark. That's awesome. That is the basics of sparks, guys. 
So the lexicon entry for SPARKs goes as follows. <clears throat> SPARKs are interesting entities created from a combination of raw energy and mana. They have the ability to be, pl to be placed on top of a few specific mana containing or accepting blocks, but uh, mainly mana pools. Some blocks have the ability to harness mana from sparks, but others, uh, but the uses for them seem rather limited right now. <clears throat> so you see it says some blocks have the ability to harness mana from sparks. Mana? Turned American. Mana from sparks. Um, placing a spark on top of a mana pool and another on top of a block that can accept it will allow for, that, for the latter to remotely access the reservoirs of the mana pool when needed, given it's not too far away. To remove a spark, simply shift right click with the Rond of the Forest. Regular right clicking shows which other sparks it can transfer to. Well, there you go. Um, six blaze powder, guys. A couple of mana petals of any colour and a golden nugget gets you a spark. Now, like I said, guys, that is the basics of sparks. You can get augments for the sparks, which are elven knowledge, guys. As it seems, sparks are a bit more versatile than it was previously known. A variety of augments can be applied to them to enhance their abilities. It's to note that augments can only be applied to sparks that lie on mana pools. A spark can only have a single augment at any given time. And some of these are pretty cool, guys, and will allow you to really streamline your uh, mana pool kind of uh, farm thing that you've got going on, whatever it is. Starting off, the Dispersive Augment has the, has the spark use the mana in the pool below to charge any nearby player's mana containing items. So you go next to it, guys, if you've got one of them sparks in there, it will start charging up your mana tablet or your items, your, you know, your, your pickaxe or your axe and stuff like that, stuff that contains mana. The dominant augment will have the spark pull any mana from any nearby non-augmented sparks pulls into its own until it's completely full. The recessive augment will have the spark output all of the mana in its pool into any nearby non-augmented or dispersive sparks pools until it's completely empty. Lastly, the isolated augment will prevent the spark from interacting with any dominant or recessive sparks, but still allow it to interact with blocks that can receive their mana through the spark network. And you can craft it with some pixie dust, a mana steel, and one of these um, different runes. And that will get you the spark augments for that particular thing, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, giving a visual example of this, let me go and get one. Um, I'll grab some of you, and I'll grab some of you, and I'll get some augments. Fantastic. I'm going to use a creative mana pool. Whoops, that's not a creative mana pool. And I'm going to have around it here just four normal ones. Bring that in a bit. In fact, that's a bit too close. There we go. Now, let us have the dispersive one on here. So let's put a spark on there. Fantastic. That's actually still linked to those. Let me go and destroy those. Oops. There we go. And there we go. Funny, you can't actually destroy them in creative. That is weird. All right, so the sparks. Let's go ahead and put some more on here. Wow, they're actually all like attached to each other. Look at that. <laughs> that is attached to all four of them, which is fantastic. So let's put the dispersive one on there. Is it not going to do anything? It's got the dispersive on it. I can see that it has the dispersive on it. Unless it actually needs to be a normal pool. Hmm, give me one second, guys. No, I think it was just me being a clown, guys. I had the reset. I had the uh, dispersive one, thinking that it would disperse the items. But if I actually read what I read properly, I would know that I've selected the wrong one. I've got the recessive one here, guys. Let me pop that onto there. And there we go. Look at that. That looks amazing. I mean, like visually, that looks really, really good. And that's basically what that one does. You can have everything, all of your power coming into this one particular thing, have a spark on there with the dispersive, uh, with the, I've said it again, with the recessive one, and it will give all of its mana to all of the mana pools that it is actually connected to. This is fantastic. Look at this. It's great stuff. Now, the dispersive one, of course, like I said, uh, if I had a mana tablet, one that isn't actually full, here we are, look. 
I've got a mana tablet right here. If I get rid of that, it will pop everything off anyway. And I pop that onto there, and I put that onto there. And I give it the dispersive one. I'm going to put this on my, on my bar so that you can see. But it should actually, it is. Uh, follow me if you want. Uh. Good stuff. So this is actually filling up my, my mana tablet right there, as you can see. That's awesome. Filling it right away up using the mana from that's inside that pool. And of course, the dominant one will um, get rid of this. Get a normal mana pool. Pop that down there. Put a spark on it. Put the dominant one on there. That will be the dominant one, so it will suck all of it from outside of these ones into this particular one. Look at that. That could be useful. Most, sh most definitely. Could definitely be useful there. And last but not least, isolated. Let's pop that onto there. You don't have to anymore. I'm just going to put a normal empty one under there with a spark. And a dominant. And now that one won't be part of it because it's isolated. It's on a different thing. It won't connect to anything. And uh, it will be left alone. So there we go. Those are the different um, augments that you can put onto sparks. Now, I do know in the works there are more augments going on as well. Um, I can't say much more than that because I really don't know what they are personally myself. I remember Vasky was talking to me about it. And um, I, I just know that there's some more coming. I just know that some more coming. I, won't, I wasn't fully understanding what he was saying, but uh, there are more coming, guys. Don't worry about that. Some, so that is a, an introduction to Sparks and Spark, Spark Augments and stuff like that. Uh, so there you go. Sparks, guys. I hope that's uh, you know improved your knowledge on Sparks and what they can do. Um, there, are, there are some neat things that you can do with them. However, I haven't done any of them yet. I, I do know that people have created like batteries and stuff like that. I'm sure that that's what uh, Vasky said to me that you know they've been creating batteries and stuff. Or oh, that's one of the things that might have been um, in what's coming up. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Would you believe? Oh, there's a reason why I have a goldfish on mine. <laughs> so there you go, Sparks, guys. Next on the list, guys, in release 104, added the Horn of the Canopy. Now, this is a, an item that I actually, uh, I said to Vaskia, you know, can you make something that will allow you to shear the leaves off of trees with one, like, foul, you know, with a Horn of the Wild kind of thing, but for the canopy, for the leaves. So he said, yeah, sure. And um, Horn of the Wild with oak leaves will now give you Horn of the Canopy. And it will do exactly what it says. Why are you not? It's because I'm not high enough. But basically, it will go ahead and shear the leaves off the trees. No messing around. No messing around trying to get loads of saplings or anything like that. Just whip one of them out. Give it a good old blow. And there you go. That's what she said. Okay, guys, added in build 105 was the Rod of the Divining. Now, for those of you who've played Equivalent Exchange, you will know what the Divining Rod does. Well, this is very, very similar. As the name implies, the Rod of Divining has the ability to, uh, to divine in a decently large radius around the user to find any ores. These will shine for a little bit, allowing their location. This process obviously requires a decent amount of mana from the user's inventory. You can make it with one mana diamond and four living wood twigs. In before EE3. Well, I think pretty much everything has been in before EE3. Down this hole, I've got them, you know, I've put some, uh, put some around, you know, some ores around. Let's see if we can find them. Using right click. Oh, look at that. There they are. There's an iron and a diamond in there, guys. And that's basically what it looks like when you can find some with the rod of the divining. Now, like I said, be careful because it does create a, um, it does, you know, suck up a decent amount of mana. I've got a creative tablet, so you can't really see what it does. Um, but there we are, guys. That is the rod of the divining. Presumably, a lot of people went on to Vasky about the fact that about, you know, like uh, cross-mod interaction and so on and so forth. Because this next block, the mana flux field, allows you to do just that. With uh, You can create redstone flux with mana. You can't do it the other way around because, you know, that's just cheating. So this way around, 
can be done with this block. You basically just got to fire something at it, you know, using one of the spreaders, just fire it straight at it, and um, it will create redstone flux. You know, you just put the redstone, like uh, uh, an energy cell or something on the side there, and it will create redstone flux for you. By passing mana through a field of redstone energy, its state can be changed from natural energy uh, source to redstone flux. Simply pointing a spreader at this block will have it shoot at it, converting the mana that lands into it into RF. It can then be pulled out of any RF uh, with any RF transporter. So there, living rock with redstone and a mana steel ingots. The bullet, guys, I bit it. He did. He bit the bullet. He did. So there we go. That is the mana flux field. My next item that I'm going to show you guys was added in 112, and it's the Rod of the Black Mesa, or Mesa, whatever you want to pronounce it like. Now, this particular item, the Rod of the Black Mesa, is a powerful relic. Legend says that the first of these devices was found on top of a dark Mesa, along with the crowbar. To use this device, the user may right-click and hold a monster or item to pick it up. Releasing right-click will drop the selected entity, while left-click will fire it in a powerful burst. This power does not come for free, of course. It requires significant amounts. I'm just seeing the little potato in the background, just like bobbing around. <laughs> it's fantastic. It requires significant amount of mana from the user's inventory. So let me go ahead and grab myself a friendly mob that's not going to try to kill me. There we go. Thank you very much, cow. And I'm just going to right click, and of course we can uh, pick him up. And we can drop him, like that. Oh, we can pick him up, left click, whilst he's picked up, holding right click. And left click him, oh. Sorry, cow! Rod of the Black Mesa, guys. Next on the list, added in build 113, is Timeless Ivy. This is really, really neat, and I, something that I actually, un that escaped my my beady little eyes until, uh, until, just, uh, until just now. The Vines, Gaia Spirit, and Elementium Ingot can create Timeless Ivy. What does this do? Well, I tell you, it does something pretty ledge. While Mana Steel or Elementium tools have the ability to harness mana and use it to protect their bodies, other tools and armor don't have this property. A handful of Timeless Ivy can be attached onto virtually any item, allowing it to be repaired with mana. To apply it, one must simply craft the tool in question alongside the ivy and three of an item that can be used to repair the tool in an anvil, example diamonds for a diamond pickaxe, Due to not being in direct contact with the material, the amount of mana used by the ivy in comparison to the mana steel is rather high. So there we go, I can craft that. And I've got over here, and me and the little tiny potato over here are going to show you how it works. So we've got the diamond pickaxe that we crafted earlier. We've got three pieces of diamond that you would usually use in an anvil to repair the diamond pickaxe should it get, uh, you know, damaged. And then the timeless ivy will get you the diamond pickaxe. Now look at the tooltip there, has timeless ivy. This can be then, you go ahead and you can use it, and it will get repaired using the mana in your mana tablet. That is pretty awesome, guys, and I never knew that this existed until now. So that is Timeless Ivy. One of the things that was added in as Elven Trade was Alf Glass. Now, Alf Glass is this stuff here. Um, you chuck mana glass into a Elven Trade, into the Elven Portal, and you get back Alf Glass. Now, this is basically, at the time, uh, this was added in beta, well, not, it wasn't added in beta, it was added in build 116. And at the time of that this was added, um, there's more uses that have come of this, actually, a bit later on when it comes to the brewing aspect of things. But for the moment, it was actually used as decorativeness. So you can see there's slight, slight tint of green in there. Uh, 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 you know, in comparison to the uh, mana glass there, which looks pretty good. I like that mana glass, but the Alf glass kind of like tessellates together quite well. So there, that that's Alf glass basically. That was added in um, back in 116. You can see you put mana glass into the Elven portal and you get back Alf glass. If there is any other uses than that, I'm not quite sure of them at the moment, but I'm probably I'm, I'm sure that I'll fill you in if I find out during the episode. Uh, but that is Alf glass, guys. Also added into build 116 was the Gaia Spreader. Now, you guys will already know that the Elven Spreader um, spreads more mana, just better, being a better spreader. But the Elven, sp uh, the Gaia Spreader, sorry, Gaia Mana Spreader, requires a Gaia Spirit and a Dragonstone to be able to craft. And the Elven Mana Spreader in there is the ultimate spreader. Now, this, um, it, it spreads more mana. 
Basically, would you believe it? Um, by combining this already powerful spreader with a Gaia Spirit and a Dragonstone Gem, one can create an even more potent variant. The Gaia Spreader is within the top two top percentage of mana spreaders, with pretty much uh, with pretty much upgrades all around. So it can basically spread more mana, guys. It's pretty awesome. That is the Gaia Spreader, and uh, that is very very useful. Like later on in the game, guys, when you need more mana going uh, a lot faster, you know, and it does it can't. Accept sparks. Gaia spreader is the way forwards. Okay, guys, we are back with build 117. Now, this added something in that I've been wanting for ages and ages and ages. And when Vasky came out and said, I'm looking for ideas on better, uh, better for life, better quality of life or something on Twitter, I was like, you've got to do this. You have to do this because it's so annoying chucking things on the top and realizing you don't have enough mana. Could you please have a way of telling us if it's craftable before we chuck it? So guys, that is exactly what happened. If I come over to this, look at that. That is great. It changes everything. And um, if it doesn't have um, enough mana, so I'm just going to go ahead and get... Um, a mana pool. I don't know if it does this for everybody, if it's just if it's just me. Look, a little goldfish pops up. <laughs> little goldfish pops up. If you press shift and it doesn't have enough mana, but it just stops you from coming along, chucking it on there, waiting to see if it pops it out, and then you have to pick it back up again. It's such a time saver, and it's brilliant. It's not too intrusive either. Ah, uh, I'm just glad I made that suggestion because it makes so much more. It makes so many people's lives much easier. Doing it that way. That is the uh, the added HUD element, anyway, to the better quality of life stuff. Um, also, guys, added in beta. Oh, well, oh, bleh, I keep saying beta. It's build 119. Is Thorncraft integration. Now this thing adds in a very nice mana steel helmet of revealing, which basically does exactly what it says in the tin. It's a mana steel helmet, but with the goggles of revealing, so you can see nodes and stuff like that that are floating around the place. It also adds in, guys, the scribing tools, Botanergist's Inkwell, and uh, this feeds off mana. That's pretty awesome. So let's have a look. First and foremost, combining any of the mana metal helms with a set of goggles of revealing allows for a combination of both. The protection and regenerability of the armor works alongside the goggles abilities, but the Vist discount is loss. Really? Yeah, well, there you go. So, yeah, you don't get the 5% Vs discount. Um, helmet revealing works with any Britannia helm, so it doesn't have to be a Man of Steel. It can be the, um, ele the oh, what was the other one? The pink one. Elementium. Elemental steel, or something like that. Elementium helmet, I think it is. Um, carrying on, mana can also serve as an interesting type of ink. Infusing a set of black scribing tools with mana from a mana pool allows for them to... Uh, to use said mana as their source of colour. Refilling these tools works re uh, similarly to a mana tablet, done it uh, done by tossing it on top of the pool. There you go, just pop that on top of there, and you get the Botanergist inkwell. Next off, there's a few varied resources or constructs that can work as paraphernalia for the infusion altar to lower its instability. These come in the form of glimmering flowers, floating flowers, and any variety of pylons. So basically, you can negate um, the Infu uh, the instability done by the infusion altar in Thorncraft using some of those glimmering flowers, floating flowers off the variety of pylons. Lastly, a special brew, which I haven't actually got into yet, can be put together using typical thaumaturgic resources in order to apply a warp ward effect. Brew of sane thoughts. These things. Um, perhaps insanity might not be the greatest toll. Uh, tool in all of occasions. For those cases, a nice bath generally takes care of it. A brew might be a better format for such a task, though. Nether wart, salus mundus, purifying bath salts, and amber. The official frowny face. Hmm. <laughs> but that, we'll get into brews a little bit later on, guys. But that is Thorm uh, Thorncraft integration in build 119. Moving on was, oh man, I've wanted this forever. I've wanted this forever. <laughs> anyway, um, is the ability, look at this, we've got a mana star, oh, Thormic, Thormic, that's not what I was meant to say, NEI integration, 
Oh my god, this has been too long. It's been too long. Having to keep opening the book, have a look, and try to follow it round, you know, as it's spinning around. Quite annoying. <laughs> um, any eye integration, guys. Oh, this is such... Oh, it's a lifesaver. It also works, guys, for the runes. For the runic altar, as you can see. And it also works for... Elven Trade. However, it will not unlock until you've unlocked the book for Elven Trade. If you haven't chucked the book in towards the Elves, you will not get the Elven Trade NEI. You just won until you've actually unlocked Elven Trade. So there you go. Oh man, that is... That, oh, that is just... It makes life so much easier. It really, really does. So coming up, guys, in the next episode, I'm going to do the new stuff, which is the brewing um, aspect of everything and all of the stuff that's been added from build 120, uh, no, 132 forwards. So I will see you guys for that one. Hopefully this episode has been useful to you guys and has maybe, you know, pointed yourself to some items that you've never used before and you've never known that was in Britannia um, that you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I can actually use that. That's really, really useful. Like this little tiny potato here. Who's going to follow me into my Let's Play on Thorncraft and Britannia Unite? I'm pretty sure of it. So anyway, guys, until next time, if you can like, uh, leave a like on the video, that would be amazing. And as always, I've been the tough man. Stay safe.